today we I am thinking about or I am going to start a print on demand shop. Um, I'm going to start on Etsy because that's the shop that I know about the most. Um, we're going to have some questions about maybe Shopify, things like that. I have a whole list of questions for my marketing bestie, Rebecca, who has been selling um, print on demand on Shopify, on Etsy, everywhere you can sell print on demand. And she is my go to. So we're going to ask her a whole bunch of questions. Say hi to the nice people, Rebecca. Hi, nice people. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so. So you sent me pictures of my artwork on these things. Right. <laughs> and I just can't. Like, I am so <laughs> happy. So uh -huh. I wanted to show you. I have, um, just so everybody knows, I have four files. I don't even know that you've seen these. I've only seen that first one. So that is the blue girl. This is the Mad Hattress. Very nice. Oh, that's lovely. Isn't it cute? Very it's cute. Queen of Heart. Super cute. And then this is, this is our Victorian curls girl. Very nice. Okay. So this is where I am. I have set up my shop, Wizard of Alice. They make you do a um, listing. So I just listed my blue girl for $100. I'd be in really big trouble if somebody bought it because um, I would have to tear up my journal. Um, so, so that's where I'm at. And then you had sent me all these things that I could put into my shop. And so let's start with my questions because um, my first one, you suggested Printify, why? Okay, so first of all, I wanna back up a little bit. Before we jump into that, I want you to tell me why it is you're, you're wanting to put your art on products for people to buy. What is your main goal? And who is it that you're trying to reach? My main goal is to make money. Okay. Um, so it's not to provide fun things for my tribe to buy. If they wanna buy it, great, but that is not the, um, primary focus of this but the primary focus of this for me is to make money with my art easily right okay, like good. i don't want to have to um like go to ups and have it printed out and then pop it in an envelope figure out do people want it framed you know and then and then you made a pencil case with my art and i'm like oh that's no. it <laughs> I must have a pencil case. Okay, um, good. So that is actually really important background for me to be able to answer your questions because people generally have two reasons that they want to put their own art on products. Number one, it is because they want to see their art in the world. It makes them happy. It's kind of therapeutic. That's a completely different strategy than if you're putting your art that you've created originally on products to sell to people who are going to buy it so that you can make a profit. They're very different strategies. The, I want to kind of preface this session with uh, letting your people know the mock-ups that I provided you yesterday are just mock-ups based on a very small image that I had copied out of an email that you sent out to your list. And so I did not have the tools I normally have to size it correctly for the different products. So it was more or less just to give you a general idea of what could be possible with your art. You, of course, are going to adjust each of your art pieces to fit the dimensions of the different products to be optimized to look the way you want it to look on the finished product. So don't I don't want your people thinking that their art is going to necessarily look the same way the mockups I have uh, shared with you because you have a lot more power over your images than I have off of that one image. Mom, so let's start. I need an ornament. I know that's so cute. <laughs> I'm like I'm like a little kid over here. That's so awesome. Um, so <laughs> okay. Yeah. So your first question, getting to back to your question, your first question is why I chose and why I work with Printify. And I have to tell you hands down, they are absolutely the most responsive with their customer service. They are the fastest turnaround time. They have the largest variety of domestic vendors. So you and I are both based in the United States. While I do sell internationally, I may not be selling internationally 
in the future just because taxing and sales laws have changed a lot over this past year and you have to now have more licenses and more things to be able to sell internationally. So Printify gives me the greatest group of resources for the broadest variety of products that are made in the United States so that I can ship them domestically and have them get there quickly with the least amount of issues. And it's easy to use. My second question too. <laughs> and I am taking notes. I'm going to have this in a blog post, everybody. So you don't have to be frantically taking notes. I'm going to take notes. I'll have a whole blog post with Rebecca's answers because this honestly is gold. Um, uh, ships quickly. Now, when you say ships quickly, what is an average time it takes to get somebody who um, bought something to them? So depending on the product and the vendor that you're working with and the beauty of inside of Printify is you you'll get a list of vendors that carry that product so you can choose them based on customer rating cost for production production time shipping costs that kind of thing there's a lot of variables that you get to choose from in inside of there um, and for my products the vendors i've selected to work with and i'll be happy to share that list for you inside of Printify Typically, once it leaves their facility, my customers have it within two to three days, period, the end. I, in fact, I don't even offer expedited shipping on my shop because for that extra money that the customer would pay for two day or overnight shipping, it really doesn't get there any faster the way that the shipping stuff is right now in this endemic world that we're in right now. So paying that extra for shipping does not get it there any faster. Just okay. that. So you just behind the scenes, you don't even offer that. Don't even offer it. Okay. And my, my customers are, they don't, they're not mad about it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that, that since they're buying a small business product and everybody, I will put a link to Rebecca's store. Um, in the blog post and also in this video description so that you can see her store. So, so my next question is how, like you sent me all these amazing things and I'm like, phone stand, that is wicked cute. I love that. Um, phone case, I'm obviously gonna have to have one of those in each of my styles. I, notebooks are a go-to <laughs> for me. A tote, yes. I don't think my art is big enough to, to do the, we're not gonna talk about DPI, we're not gonna talk about um, how to prepare your files in this video, um, but I think my art, the original size, is probably not going to be able to be extrapolated with the camera I'm using to the size for a shower curtain. So um, if we take that off the plate and probably the blanket, I could. And you'd be surprised because between Canva and Printify and all the tutorials between the two, you can take that very image I used and resize it to the correct DPI so that you could actually put it on those products. And that's all within Canva and Printify, how to do that. Okay. So, so it is possible. I do it all the time. Canva and Printify. Because I use, uh, I use, I'm, I'm a graphics designer. So I use fancy programs like Photoshop, um, but Rebecca does, so just so you know, you don't need to do that. Rebecca does all of her designing in Canva and then sets, you know uploads those files to Printify and she's totally able to do it. So if you have a smartphone camera and Canva, you can make these kind of products for your store. So Perfect. anyways, back to my question. Out of all these amazing things, uh, how would I, and this is a general question, and then we're going to go deeper, right? Right. How would I pick which items to sell? Okay, so this is actually a very simple answer because you told me you want to make money with the products that you sell. So the way that you're going to pick which products you're going to put your art on to sell is going to be 1,000% based on who your customer is and what they are actually buying. 
just because it looks super cute to you on a mouse pad or an ornament or a blanket doesn't mean that that's what your customers will be buying. So the very first thing you have to research is what products are popular with your people right now. And that's how you pick what products to put it on. Okay, we are not going to do these searches today publicly. <laughs> right. We're going to do all this fun stuff after we kick you off. This is just the I'm picking her brain and then we're going to do everything together. But how, how do you I use Marmalade to kind of to look at what people are searching for. Um, I believe you use E-Rank. Um, I use E-Rank and Etsy. OK, so uh, research tools. Etsy itself. Yep. I use Marmalade. And you use E-Rank. Correct. Um, so, so for me, I feel like it's easier because I've done Etsy SEO for millions of years. <laughs> I know Etsy hasn't been around since the dinosaurs, hours, but, um, <laughs> but for the people listening, like what would be your very first step for trying to determine that if they were selling their art? So my very first step before I even got into E-Rank is I would go right to Etsy, right to the Etsy search bar and put in my idea for what it was I wanted to sell, uh, the, the type of art plus the product that I instinctively thought they might be interested in. And first of all, see if anybody is even searching for that. And if they are, what kind of other products in that kind of genre are available already? And okay. They've sold. That, that's where I start. So for me, and I do think we're going to get, wait, 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 wait. And there's a reason I do it that way and then work it back the other way. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to talk about, because as artists, the cool thing about us is that you're not starting with like, um, say, say you were, uh, uh, making courses or something like that your knowledge is in one certain area and you have to sell that and then work out from there where we can kind of work backwards as artists and go oh this is the kind of thing that people want and now i can make a piece of art that is going to match what the people want correct so that is okay so generally how many different types of items should I sell? Well, we're so let's go back to that question because that, that's a many part question. So we want to go over the different parts. Um, so the first step is you would go to Etsy and see if your idea has any merit. If it does not, then you want to see if there are other similar types of things that might have merit. Um, and then at that point, you would put it into your search tool and find out you want to know how many other creators on Etsy have a listing that's similar to what you're wanting to put up there. You want to find out how many searches are happening for that very thing, because if only five people are looking for that thing in a month, it's probably not your best thing to start with. But if 5,000 people are looking for that thing in a month, then you can probably niche it down and find the group of people who will actually buy your product. So there, there's kind of several different levels you go through to figure out that what you're going to put up there the first time first of all right right and we i have a ton of videos about how to do etsy seo research so functionally what i would do is i uh, called my father-in-law and he said my search terms are up, 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 up. Well, i lost them <laughs> anyway are like pop art um contemporary art uh, I kind of looked up feminist art. It looked good. And so then I would go to Etsy. I would look and see what kind of things people are selling with that. And then I would go to, so, so then I would go to the actual thing like coffee mugs. Let's just be realistic. A million people are selling coffee mugs. A million people are buying coffee mugs. We know that coffee mugs are a thing. But then the second half of that is what you're saying is, does your art selling coffee mugs have 4 million different um, competing websites or competing products? If so, that might not be the best fit for a beginning artist. Is that what right. I'm hearing? That's, yeah, that's, that's 
kind of the broad way to look at it. Secondly, you want to take into consideration your art is a very specific type of art. There are very specific groups of people looking for this type of art. So the first thing you have to figure out is what kind of products are people who like this art going to be interested in purchasing? That's a really important thing that people really miss the first time they try to do print on demand. They just think they're going to put it on a bunch of different products that seem like popular products and it's going to sell. It does not work that way. It's not even close to that. So you have to understand who you're selling to well enough to know are they looking for coffee mugs or are they looking for phone cases or are they looking for journals and you have to know that first so that i think this is really interesting to talk about because you and i are very much in agreement that you can't sell anything unless you know who you're selling to and um and you nudged me this morning and said this is not going to be the same as what you're doing now Absolutely. And I can totally see that because the type of person who follows my YouTube, who follows my stuff, um, who's on my newsletter list, I have I have uh, data for all those people, customer demographics for all those people, and those are primarily over um, 50, let's say, women, right? right? And so I'm not sure that my that all of the knowledge I have about those people is necessarily going to be helpful to me because I'm not sure that the people purchasing this, unless I make hippie girls or I make something that's going to appeal to boomers, which I can do, but um, but I'm not sure that the artwork that I just showed you, the four kinds of artwork that I do, is going to appeal to 50 plus people. It may be more um, interesting to younger women who are looking for this kind of artwork, True. in which case I'm going to have to learn about those kind of people. And you're at a really in a really unique advantage for who you are as a person. And I understand that your people don't necessarily have the same resource that you do. Some of them might, but you are in a position to be able to share or to poll your email group to say, if you were going to purchase a product on Etsy, which products are you most likely to buy? So you can go to the people who are already your people and ask them, if I create something on, on a product, what is the most likely thing that you would purchase? And they will tell you exactly what they'll buy. And then you can start with that product first, whichever ones get the most response, start there. Cause they've already told you they would buy it. And those are your people because you've already built your list. So I can tell you in all sincerity, my people will buy journals and pencil cases. Fantastic. So those are the two things I would start with. Okay, I'm going to start with that. Because <laughs> it's so funny because when you sent me those, so of course, I love the pencil makeup bag cap pouch. Um, I do love a tote, but I like a tote that's fully all around, not just stuck on it. But I did see this acrylic phone stand and I'm like, a phone stand. So I will tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt right now on Etsy and we are talking about right now today because you're getting your stuff ready for the holiday right. market and you want to make money so I'm going to tell you right now today figure out how to size your art for tote bags because tote bags are one of the most popular selling products on Etsy right now and I suspect that your over 50 women will buy tote bags because I sell a boatload of them and we have kind of the same demographic, not the same interests, but the same age group that we're kind of selling to. And those tote bags sell like crazy. I will tell you that right make now. me some tote bags. So that's so, another thing as an artist is not only can you figure these things out, but then you can almost format. I was just thinking, so, so it's super interesting, Rebecca. I was looking at the, the phone case and I'm like, Oh, on the phone case, it's better to have the girl more situated to the left or to the right. On the the spiral notebook, it's probably going to be better to have a little bit of room around her. Um, for the tote bag, this is a vertical design rather than a horizontal design. And I'm going to need to start looking at that as something... And then what I did, just so you know, um, so that people can know, 
is I did um, paint some similar, uh, just so just from the artist side rather than the Etsy side, I did paint some uh, different, um, d you know, patterns and designs and things. So if I need to fill in some space, I can in my style. Um, so. So, so if you were asking my professional opinion on what you should stock your store with right now for Christmas, yes. here are the things that I would tell you. I would tell you the journals for sure, both the spiral journal and the hardbound journals, those sell very well. I would say definitely the tote bag. Pencil bags, makeup bags do sell too, not as much as some of the other products. I would definitely put it on a canvas wall art that they can purchase. The Printify offers three different sizes. The quality is phenomenal and it's already framed and ready to hang when it gets here. I did one, a portrait of each of my children and they're just fantastic. And I would definitely do the ornaments. My number one selling product out of all of my designs, and I have almost 2000 listings on my Etsy site, my number one selling product last Christmas was ornaments, all kinds of ornaments, so. Wonderful, thank you for that tip. Welcome. So, um, and puzzles, if you're being creative, put puzzles, you'll sell a lot of puzzles. That's fun, okay, so. So that's what I would do. I would take each of your four designs and I would put it on each of those five or six, whatever it was, things that we just discussed. And I would do that for each one of your designs, a separate listing. Oh, I would totally, I do. The, the reason I do separate listings and I suggest people do separate listings is because it gives you more keyword opportunities. Absolutely. So a lot of times what people will want to do is say, hey, here's a journal. You can choose one of these four designs and for numerous reasons. Number one, that the primary image isn't going to show up as something that somebody might want down to keywords. So I, and if you've got four options for two different types of journals and you make a separate listing for each type of journal and each of your designs, that's however many pictures of each of those different designs that you have to work with for your marketing. Right. So, so I am definitely a more is better. Now, this is a really, I'm not even going to write down this question because it's ridiculous. Um, say I wanted a phone case and a phone stand of my art. <laughs> For me, uh, does it hurt to have those in my, well, first off, I have to put them in, well, I could order them from Printify, right? I yes, you will get them. your sample price from Printify. And, and I suggest you do that with anything you're going to sell, unless you know somebody personally who has purchased from that vendor and had a good experience, because you want to see what kind of quality your customers are getting. And so I've done that multiple times where I've created a design that I love and got it on a product that I don't normally sell just to see what it's like because I wanted that thing and then ultimately decided to put it in my shop. You are not your customer, so you don't, while you know what they are interested in and you can start with that, they're always gonna surprise you with what they're actually going to buy as opposed to what you assume they will buy. So. Well, and, and and like you said, I have been doing this for many, many years and selling things for many, many years. And I will tell you in all sincerity, they will also start telling you, I need a coffee mug with this design that on it. That was what I was gonna say. <laughs> and when you and I, you and I have been friends for going on 15 years now. So we know mostly the same things, right? Um, and I, I have to tell you, I have a really, really, really strong repeat customer business. So I have a lot of people that come back, they buy something from me the first time, and then they come back and buy it on a different product later on because they really like that design or a variation of that design. I have, I have a lot of repeat business and I really enjoy having that. I'm not a one and done kind of girl. So exactly what you just said is true. They will come to me and say, hey, I'd really like to have it on some sticky notes. Is there any way I could get that? And if they ask, I know there's a demand for it. I will now create that, put it in my store. And sure enough, other people will buy it too. So. Well, for me, the, the, the very most interesting thing about this is the ease of, that's why I said, how many should I have? 
because literally you could spend a day or two days or three days putting all your art on a million things. You could functionally do that, mm -hmm. right? On like literally everything, have a giant store, um, you know, it, it becomes a little bit of a product management thing because products will come and go, whatever, but it's possible. But right. also our time is finite and we want to do the things that are going to make the most difference right. in our sales because I'm not doing this for fun except for ordering a really cute phone stand. But right. other than that, it is about figuring out where our time is best spent so yep. that we can um, make products that people want to buy. And that's what I tell my students all the time is you're going to be very tempted to put it on every possible product that you can do not resist the temptation. Do not do that. You pick the three to five products that your customer is most likely purchasing right now and you put it on those products and move to the next design. You can always come back later and add more products. And in fact, Printify is always adding new vendors with new types of products. And then some vendors will go away and you'll have to take them out of your store. Like I used to have sell table lamps, but that vendor left this last month. So we had to take all of those listings back out of our store. And that does happen from time to time. But if you start with the things that you know are going to sell, if your objective is to make money, you start with the things you know people will buy and then expand out from there. And you want to have a variety. So I love that you already have four designs in the queue that you're ready to work with, because by the time you put each of the four of those on five different designs, you're going to have a healthy little store with a lot of options that's killing it with keywords. So that's really important too. You're going to be able to dominate for certain types of things so that as the holidays roll in, people are going to be seeing your stuff pop up all the time. A lot of people don't realize that it does take Etsy about 30 to 60 days to index your listings. So even if you put a listing up and you do a search and it shows up for you, that doesn't mean it's showing up elsewhere on Etsy. So if you're planning to make money for the holidays, you want to load your store that we're in the month of July. You want your store loaded right now so that Etsy has time to index it. Yeah, I would think that I would think that I will be spending from now until August, end of August, kind of when the kids are around or whatever, um, making art that matches what we decide I should be making art with, um, loading those products, learning how to use the different systems, figuring out how the, the selling works, and then, um, and then come September, I am going to flip over into marketing push and and you know really start trying to make that a difference so and it's really important for your people to know since you're going into consumer to consumer selling for the holiday season that because of the way shipping has been in this pandemic era your last day to sell products that people will be able to get in time for christmas is november 30th so all they are buying already and they buy a lot september october and november so you've got to also have your marketing in place in september so it's a multi faceted kind of thing but yes you don't want to be selling products after november 30th that you can't guarantee can get there in time for christmas so you have like a three-month window and it's pretty much september october november so in order to get your listings indexed so that they're showing up for people who are shopping for christmas in september you've got to load them up now yeah yeah well and so here's just a little tip um if you're behind, right? So I got over 5,000 hits for my Father's Day um, blog post with um, uh, social media. And I had put that up not far ahead of Father's Day. Um, I put up a 4th of July one that did wah, 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 like 78. So it won't, it didn't, it didn't take off this year, but I promise That's you, good that next year it will be really strong. So oh, yes. so this is not a, I am not building a print on demand business to sell for this shopping season. 
I am building a print on demand business that will provide me income for years to come. And so don't get worried if you're behind. So how many, how many items should you have in my, how many items should I have in my store? So yes, I think four times, you know, have my six products, I'm going to have 24. Is that 24? Yes. 24. I'm going to have somewhat of a robust store. I'm going to have enough for catalog, uh, for the category pages. I'm going to have enough that it looks nice, but that isn't all that much variety, right? Right. Like, so you want to try to hit a hundred listings in your store. There's a tipping point that happens on Etsy when you hit a hundred listings and that's like the magical point you want to get to where without investing in ads and without being really SEO wizard kind of thing, you start showing up on all the front pages for all the things. And that's just because you have so much volume and you've got so many of those keywords in what your customer is looking for that you begin to dominate. And that tipping point is a hundred listings. Okay. So um, talk to me a little bit, just generally, cause we're running out of time here. Cause I need to use you for me too. Um, <laughs> how, can, how can I sell more as an artist? I can choose what I'm going to be making, right? That's the beauty of, of being an artist. So how can I sell more items by choosing popular topics and colors? Um, and I say colors because as an artist, I, I love the Pantone color of the year and blah, blah, blah. Um, what, what have you found with that kind of thing? Like choosing topics or colors and llamas come to mind, right? So yes, and llamas always sell well. So it's a combination of both because people do, and especially you're in an artistic kind of community. So they are tuned into those Pantone colors. It's likely that your customers are going to know what that Pantone color of the year is. It's likely that your customers being women of a certain age are going to be tuned in to certain social conversations right now. And so you as an artist can take the combination of what is top of mind socially for people plus those Pantone colors plus your own unique flavor and turn it into designs and do very well. Because now you're going to get to use those keywords in your listings as well. The Pantone colors that people already know, the topics that people are already talking about. Yep. We'll just put this out there. One of my goal, so I totally get that. Um, I have blog posts on Marketing Artfully about how to, how to find popular things, right? Like we totally get popular things. So um, just to let you know, I just wrote a blog post about um, stories that are in the public domain. And there are some amazing stories in the public domain, like the Wizard of Oz, Pooh Bear just came in, um, Alice in Wonderland, Alice in things Wonderland. like that, that you can use those stories. You can't use the Disney version of it. Never. Never, never, never. We're being very careful. You want to use things that are in the public domain. So how do I figure out, um, just at 40,000 feet, so that my people know, and then we'll dig into 10 feet ourselves. But um, like, so if I were to pick Alice in Wonderland, how would I go about figuring out what kinds of things people like? Okay, so the very first thing you would need to do is go to the trademark database and find out if Alice in Wonderland is trademarked. And if it is, then you cannot use that as part of your description or what it, well, okay, you, you know as well as I do, it can be trademarked for certain uses. So I did do a bit of a search before we hopped on here today. So you won't be able to use Alice in Wonderland in anything because it's kind of trademarked on everything. Wizard of Oz, you can still make totes, you can make journals, you can make stuff like that and use the words Wizard of Oz in your listings. So you will be able to do that. But first of all, you have to know if that's a term you can even use. If it is, then the next thing you're going to kind of look at is, is what are the emotional triggers associated with that thing? So are people more emotionally uh, reactive to Alice in Wonderland or might they be more emotionally reactive to the Mad Hatter or to the Queen of Hearts or to the Cheshire Cat? So even though some of those broad terms are good for the initial idea process, you're really looking for those lesser used terms that resonate with a, a specific number of people 
there's like a baseline you would use that are going to have lower competition than some of the other broader names. That makes such good sense. I love that. Okay, wonderful. Um, what kind of, so from a business standpoint, what kind of margins should I shoot for? Okay, so first of all, you got to decide if you're going to offer free shipping or if they're going to pay for shipping in addition. I offer free shipping on everything, and I price my products to cover not only the cost of the product, the cost of production, the Etsy listings, and the shipping it costs, but even if I run a 20% sale in my store, I still walk away with a 20% profit. So you do have to do a little bit of math. Because I see so many people, they try to price compete on Etsy. And I just need to say, point blank, if you're looking to have the lowest price thing, go to eBay. Etsy doesn't want it. Etsy is a boutique website and people who come there to shop are expecting to pay more for something that they can't get at Walmart, if that makes sense. So I have to help people understand this all the time they end up pricing their stuff where they are not making any profit at all they get discouraged and they leave do not do that to yourself my formula is i take the cost of the product the cost of production the cost of shipping the cost of etsy listings then add 20 percent in case i want to have a 20 percent sale and then add another 20 percent to that so that I can run a 20% sale and still make 20%. So it's going to vary on the different products. And according to whatever vendor you choose to work with in Printify, that you'll find that some of them offer the product itself for cheaper, but they charge more on shipping. Some have a higher price on the product, but charge a lot less for shipping. And once you've been at it a while and you sell as much as I do and the vendors learn to recognize you, you'll start getting better deals. And you also can, uh, you can pay for your Printify account and you get a bigger discount on products. Oh, I was going to ask you about that's Printify Premium. Printify Premium. Yeah. Should we do that? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, so if you're going to sell a lot, if you're only going to sell a handful of things, then maybe not. But if you're going to sell a lot, yes. Oh, I'm going to sell a lot. Um, do you wind up having to mind your store very much? Like how I'm not going to be selling any uh, personalized items. Right. So, so your stores on Printify, basically you're going to have your Etsy and your Shopify. And I'm going to encourage you to always have a Shopify if you have an Etsy. And we can do that in another video and explain why that's important, but you want to have that. And so you, there are two ways you can set up your Printify integration with both platforms. One is to fulfill itself automatically. You've got your credit card on file and you've got it set up to where as soon as somebody places an order within 24 hours, it just sends it to production. It makes it, spits it out and off it goes. You can also choose to manually manage it, which I choose to do because every once in a while I'll get a customer that says, okay, I purchased this listing, but I'm wondering if you could add this or I put in the wrong address and I need to change it or different little things can happen. And so I like to manually put those orders through each individual one so that I can manage those little things. It, there's no right or wrong on that. If you choose to do it automatically, I encourage you to do it. Just make sure you have a credit card with room on it attached so they can fulfill it and ship it out. So it's very, very low maintenance, extremely low maintenance. It can be extremely low maintenance. I do it a different way than the average bear, but you've got to pick what's right for you. Uh, what types of items do you personally sell the most? You said uh, ornaments. Last At Christmas year. time, I sell a lot of ornaments and I'm already starting to sell a couple. So I know people are already shopping. I'm, I'm just telling you. Um, predominantly, I sell the most coffee mugs. I have a huge selection of coffee mugs. I sell a lot of coffee mugs. I sell a lot of journals. I sell a lot of Sherpas. What are uh, Sherpas? Sherpas. Oh, the Sherpas are excellent quality. I have several myself. They're what amazing. Sherpas? I don't even oh, know what they are. I'll show you after the video. Okay. <laughs> I don't um, know about these Sherpas. 
I sell tote bags like crazy, especially if they match a mug or match some other product. I do offer t-shirts, oh. sweatshirts in my shop, but t-shirts and sweatshirts are so saturated that it's really hard to sell those right now unless they are a matchy matchy part of that niche that you've really tuned into. So like I can sell shirts and sweatshirts to my repeat customers, but as far as competing on those in Etsy as a general store, yeah, I, I don't do very well that way. But I think you just said something that's gold that, and this is why I'm talking to you, because you have two years of experience doing this, is that if if you think about a journal and a pencil case, those two go together as a really nice present. Yes, and right. you can make a you can make a bundle in your Etsy shop with those things. You can sell two things from Britify at the same time. So those you would you would enter those as a man if you're going to do manual entry. Yes, you can do that all day. You can create that listing that bundles your products together, and then you just have to make sure that it goes over that way. It's it doesn't have a a way to bundle products in a grouping on Printify. So you have to kind of pull those products all in together. Oh, okay. But but you could definitely do something like say, this goes perfectly with the, I'm almost, I'm almost. Oh yeah, it's a, just, you have to. <laughs> just FYI, I'm almost thinking that, um, how cute would it be to have like the journal in the colors and then the um, like pencil case in the pattern that match. So it wasn't all matchy match, right. but it definitely went together. Oh, I think there's so many ways you can play with that. And then in your listing, if you link to your other matching items elsewhere in your store, Etsy allows those links within Etsy to be live links. You cannot link to anything off of the Etsy platform, but if it's to another listing in your shop, it lets it be a live link and they can go directly to that link and see that exact product. To me, that's so smart and fun because I um, I can put like the, like I know how to use Photoshop and you can use minus background in um, Canva. Right. So you could have a lifestyle picture of your say journal and then just have a corner of your pencil case peeking in and then talk about the fact that they go together. Yeah, and the great thing about Printify is they they provide mock-ups. Now, they're not obviously the best mock-ups, and you would want to go probably to place it or another utility like that to create more mock-ups if you don't have photography background. But they do provide some mock-ups of the basic products to begin with. And so you always want to lead with that mock-up photo on your listing. Um, there was another point I was, was going to tell you with that. Now I have lost it. Uh. Damn about it. about selling things together yes it'll come back to me <laughs> Good, it'll come back to me you you'll have to tune in next oh, time people i know what it is Darn it. <laughs> okay it's a so, so we were talking about linking to the other products that were the same design so that they could buy multiple products yeah. what i've decided to do in in one of my shops and i have four etsy stores but in one of my stores i created categories based on the specific niches that people are interested in and i put that link at the bottom to that category so if they hit that link in that listing it takes them to the whole category for every product i have with that design on it or okay. with that theme on it awesome Okay, that's going to be us for today. As I said, I will have this as a whole blog post. I know this may not have been the most visually exciting um, video you've ever seen, but I do think that there's a lot of good information that we went over today. And if you'd rather just read it, I will have this in a blog post. Thanks, Rebecca. Oh, tell the people where they can find you. Oh, so the easiest way to find me is just to go to RebeccaAndCo.com and you'll find connections to everywhere I am right there. Wonderful. Okay, I will talk to you soon.